everyone, and welcome to Tabor Talk. I'm your host, Michael Tabor. I'm downstairs now in my unfinished basement. See the ceiling and all that? Kind of cool. This is my wife's art studio, little art studio. So we have a wood stove here. Madeline's going to make a fire in a bit. So I've taken Tabor Talk inside. Okay, getting right into this. Um, I finally subscribed to Howard Stern's channel because I feel sorry for him. He only has... 568,000 subscribers. Not bad. Not bad for, you know, someone, a regular guy, and, you know, trying to, you know, it's not bad. But for a guy who gets a hundred million dollars a year, I don't know what it's, what's going on with him now. I know he signed, but right when he first came out, was it like 10 years ago? That big, when he went from terrestrial radio to series. Serious? Serious? Whatever. Serious radio, that was huge, and Howard was huge, right? He would get, for each radio broadcast he was on every day, he'd get, like, over 10 million listeners, like, around... I mean, he was crazy. He was the best, without question, the greatest broadcaster ever, talk show host. And now he's older, you know? But he still, he gets these A-list people, like, here's Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, uh, I got the circle going on, but... Uh, oh, it's over here. Okay, so here's. Are you afraid hey, of death? Are you afraid? No, I'm not afraid of death. I am. I'm just pissed off about it. Yes. Because I mean, especially I think when you have a life. Boy, like Arnold's have, getting old. Yes. Look at Robin. Look at that fucking studio. Over. Come on. I mean, man. that really pisses me off. Governor, where are we gonna go when we die? Be honest with us. So I like well, that. The truth is that we go six feet down there. That's and it. We're gonna rot there. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's I still it. like that. I, I think Howard. I've been very critical, and I'll tell you why I was critical because. um I grew up with Howard. Howard was my first hero, my first radio girlfriend, if you will. Um, I discovered Howard after high school. He was on NBC, and it was the greatest thing I've ever heard. It was like, oh, my God, this was a regular guy on the radio uh, talking about his penis. You know, a little bit of the shock. We never heard this. We heard before that, like Dr. Ruth Westheimer talking about penis, right? But... Um, he was just very interesting. He was goofy and crazy and like a regular guy just talking on the radio, real honest radio, crazy, like fucking insane radio. And he was hilarious. And then he got fired. You know, he did the whole thing. He got fired essentially on the radio. I'm going to walk out. I mean, you got to hear this stuff. It's wild. It's wild. Think about back then. Like, if you listen to it now, it's like boring. Like, what's the big deal? Like, some of his old radio shows, it's like, this sucks. See what I mean? Context. Go back further, you go back to old Lenny Bruce. It's like, he was like the best comedian ever. It's like, I don't I don't get it. Some of Lenny Bruce's stuff still holds up, but m much of it doesn't. Same with the Howard Stern. A lot of it's like, really? He was really... People don't understand, like, what's so great about him? You know, so anyway. Um, so anyway, I followed Howard. He was... Uh, Got fired for NBC. Then he went to K Rock, right? K Rock. I was there day one. I was like psyched, and he saved that radio. The radio stations didn't survive, you know. Like in New York, here you had NEW and PLJ, and they eventually died with rock. You know, with the whole Michael Jackson thing that destroyed rock and roll, classic rock, and it's just hard to get a, a, a success to have a successful radio station. Howard Stern. This was this new thing, radio personality. Went to K Rock, and in the beginning, by the way. Howard was, you know, a talk show host, but he was playing music too. A lot of mostly talk, but he would still have to play some music. Can you believe this? This is back like 83, 84, something like that. And then Howard went to the morning, morning drive time. It was two to six. And okay, fast forward. I'm not going to go through Howard's career. I've done several videos on this. You can go back to my channel and my thoughts on Howard's big hero, big influence on me. I loved him. Um, and I got sick of them just to say, I got sick of, I, I I like to find guys who are starting out in their career and I go, and I like to discover them. I'm like, oh, this guy's good. I'm pretty good at that. Right. And Howard, Howard was pretty big when I discovered him, but he wasn't huge. It was like my thing. I was like the only guy. Listen, I go, this Howard Stern guy is amazing. Um, uh, he, again, he had a big cult following. I'm not going to say I discovered him when he had 100 fans. That's not true. He, you know, he was in Detroit and all this. But anyway, when Howard um, had his movie going on, right? He had first he came out with the book, 
private parts, and then he made a movie. And I was working in Midtown right there. I remember Madison Square Garden. It's like this huge banner of Howard Stern private parts. I go, holy fuck, whatever happened? To... I was listening to him when he was pig vomit, you know, and now it's like this big fucking shot. He was married to Allison Stern at the time. And then Howard got big, and I got, ah, I got bored with him. I got bored. Fame went to his head. His ego got away from him. And I, and then the serious radio, I didn't pay. I'm like, I'm not paying for fucking radio. Just the point, the principle of it. I think he, he was still funny. He was on his A game right then. His radio show was fucking awesome. And then he went to, um, uh, you know, him and Artie Lang. Still, Jackie was fired, right? But Artie Lang and um, then he could swear and everything. And that was interesting. Even before you could swear, Stern's show was fucking X-rated, man. He was somehow, he was a genius with that. He was able to say the most horrible things. And you have all these people just off the street, you know, Hank the Angry Drunk and Crackhead Bob. It was fucking hardcore, man. And uh, it was so super, if you want to use the word punk, it was super fucking punk rock, like just fucking subversive, fucking kick-ass fucking radio, man. No question about it. And now we're at Howard's old, and I find him, I still think it's good. I think he has an excellent show. Um, but it's, he's an old man, kind of. But he's still, like, he's talking about death with Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's interesting shit. He's unusual. He's a gifted man. But listen, man, I just checked out. He has 568,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's his channel. That's not someone else's. That's Howard Stern's channel, which is not bad. And you go to Joe Rogan's official JRE. Uh, J Joe Rogan has 6.5 million subscribers. Howard Stern... What did I say? Was it 568,000? 560, Joe Rogan, 6.5. So look at how they're compensated. Joe's doing okay. I'm not feeling sorry for Joe. Joe gets $25 million a year. Like, it's podcasting. It's a different sort of thing. Howard Stern, years ago, hundred, and I still believe he's getting like $100 million a year. Someone's losing, a, someone's taking a bath. Someone's taking, like... How, like, do the math. $100 million a year. Like, you have 568,000 subscribers, like, for advertisers. Like, something's not right. <laughs> I knew, I, I, when Howard first got his contract, $100 million, he was doing the talk show circuit. And he, he was just right before he went out to series. And he married Beth, you know, the new model girlfriend. He was on. Bill O'Reilly show. Bill O'Reilly was on Fox. And even Bill O'Reilly said, Stern, a hundred million a year? You gotta be fucking kidding me. Oh, he couldn't swear on Fox. So he said, you gotta be kidding me. And Howard goes, and I'm worth every penny of it. At the time, he made money. He made up the money. I mean, people don't give money away for nothing. You know, I mean, he had a huge following. Now he's older and young people are interested in Howard Stern. It's like, look at his, like his guests, like Arnold's 160 years old. I listen to him. I, you know, I'm older too, but, um, uh, you know, so is, I guess I'm going to end it, it here. Is Howard Stern even relevant anymore? Change of the guard. Younger people, Joe Rogan. Although Joe, Joe Rogan's no spring chicken either. Joe Rogan's 52. He's like my age, right? Um, you just, you know, again, I talk about, staying hip and cool but age always age appropriate nobody wants i don't know i wish howard could go back to the times when he was in his late 20s and early 30s i mean it, he was just so much funnier i thought all right there you go good friends good books and a sleepy conscience peace love and understanding here on Tabor talk in my unfinished business all right from the cat skills getting cold people mm -hmm.